I want to talk with you today a little bit about binding in a table saw. It's a very important topic and it's very important because it's safety related. You know, the biggest problem, the biggest safety issue in a table saw is if you're doing a rip cut. I mean, the safety issues are rips, not cross cuts, unless you really do something uh, out of the ordinary. But if you're doing a rip, you're pushing the wood against this blade and the blade continues to go through it the whole length. And so you have to keep pushing this thing. And the danger is what's called kickback. Kickback means that the saw, the motion of the saw blade actually forces this piece of wood back this direction at high speed. That can happen uh, and you have to guard against it. It is the most important safety concern when you're using a table saw. So before I even talk about what causes it to catch and go back this way, let's talk about your orientation, you the operator, your orientation to this work as you're doing a rip cut. You never do a rip cut standing behind the wood like this, because if it does kick back, it's gonna kick back right into your uh, important organs and you really don't want that to happen. So the first thing is you stand to the side. You always look at the line that goes through the blade off into infinity in the back and you make sure you're standing well to the side of that and uh, not above the piece of wood either because it can come up, not only back. So you want to stay to the left of that imaginary line and you want to stay uh, not over top of it, okay? So that said, how can we get into trouble and have it kick back? Well, there's a couple things that can happen. Uh, the most common one is binding, which is caused by this distance, the distance in the, at the back of the blade from, the, from the, this edge of the blade to the fence is less than the distance from that same measurement from the front of the blade to the fence. And so you can see what happens in that case. In that case, you're going into a triangle, which is a parallelogram, I guess, which is narrowing to the back. And when it narrows, it gets pinched between the blade and the, uh, the fence, and that causes friction, which pushes it back this way. Another thing that can happen is that the board could be warped. So as you go through the board, it, let's say it's bowed in this direction, if that's clear. And as you go through, the back of the, of the board tends to pull over this way. And when it does that, it can bind on the back of the blade and again, kick out. So in that instance, it would be coming away from the surface of... Uh, of this fence, but it would go into the blade and get pushed back. The way we prevent that is with this device right here, which is called a riving knife. This riving knife is right on the line of the blade and it tends to, it keeps the warped board, if it is warped, from coming back into the blade. That goes against the riving knife and the riving knife is not moving. And so it does not have a tendency to kick back. Now, if you're binding, how do you know you're binding, first of all? You may be binding slightly, and you would see it with burns in the wood. Here's a piece of two-inch cherry that has been rip cut, and I think you can see on there that the blade has burned it. And that could be caused by one of two things. The first one is cherry tends to burn, so if you get it hot at all, it will burn. But more likely is that you're getting binding in the back and the blade is producing too much friction on the back of the blade compared to the front. So it's heating up more back there and burning the wood. So that's an indication, if you get burning, that's an indication that you might be getting this binding by the fact that your fence is causing that binding. Now the way you have your fence uh, the way you align your fence correctly is that the back dimension, 
measurement from the blade over to the fence has to be greater than or equal to that same dimension up here. The way you measurement, measure that is to pick a particular tooth, mark it with a magic marker, bring it up here and do the measurement with a very precise rule, and then move that to the back and make the same measurement with the same precise rule. And this gap back here has to be greater than or equal to the one on the front. If it's not, refer to your, your owner's manual as to how to realign uh, this fence. And it's generally pretty easy with just a couple of screws. So that's very important that you do that. So again, binding is uh, a very serious issue in a table saw. It can result in uh, poor results like burning that you see here. But worse than that, it can result in kickback, which can severely injure the operator. So again, you wanna have your geometry correct and stay away from the line of attack of the blade. And you wanna make sure that you have a riving knife on the back of the blade, in, behind the blade, in case there's a warped piece of wood that you're ripping. And finally, you wanna make sure that the distance from the tooth to the to the, uh, to the fence in the front is greater than or equal to that same measurement in the back. So if you liked what you saw, please hit the like button. And as always, we ask that you subscribe and we'll keep you updated on future videos.